uh, the crow scouts or the scouts that are up on the crow's nest they suggest that Custer attack immediately because they feel that the camp uh, that Indians have spotted the soldiers and the Indian camp is going to break up and flee scatter and Varnum I don't believe he suggested it but he he definitely concurred with what the the scout said well Custer is confident that he found at least one village in the Little Bighorn Valley so the whole command the whole group on the crow's nest decides to depart and go back toward or down Davis Creek toward where the command is meanwhile on the back trail uh, the command under Reno the 12 companies have moved down Davis Creek down which is west down Davis Creek toward the Wolf Mountains several miles and they finally stopped at an area called the halt number two camp a couple minutes later uh, they get some visitors. The visitors are in the form of uh, Sergeant Curtis and his group. Sergeant Curtis has found the lost pack on the back trail. Unfortunately, Indians have found it first, and Curtis's group attempts to surround these Indians and eliminate them, but the Indians get away even though they're firing. So Curtis feels that the command has been spotted, and they just leave the pack there and they hightail it back west down Davis Creek where they arrive at the halt number two camp and they inform the regimental adjutant William Cook of the situation and they feel that the command has been spotted so they need to tell Custer this information immediately so Tom Custer he and we, along with first lieutenant uh, James Calhoun of company L they depart the halt number two camp to come to the crow's nest here to inform Custer of the pack situation they don't get very far before the Custer party uh, runs into them. Custer is on his way back to the halt number two camp. So the two groups meet and go back to halt number two where Custer is informed of the lost pack incident. Feels the command has been spotted. Indians are on the back trail. That along with the information that there were two parties of Indians in the front area that have disappeared and probably saw the camp smoke at halt number one and saw the dust cloud of the Custer party. The, uh, scouts feel that the command has been spotted. Barnum, most likely the same way. Curtis definitely feels they've been spotted. At this point Custer has no choice but to attack and that, that's his decision. He wanted to actually hold, hide out this day and actually scout this forward area because it is a wide area that's still some 15 miles to the Little Bighorn River. So he wanted to scout this whole area in front, figure out which would be the best way to come down and attack the Indian village. But he's got no choice but to attack now because he feels that the command has been spotted. The Indians, it's only a matter of time before they go back to the village and alert the village and the village will scatter. So at this point, Custer calls an officer's call. He informs all the officers of the all the information he has, gives them all the information he has. And he says that they're going to attack immediately. They're in battle mode. Not one of the officers at the officer's call were against this decision. All of them, to a man, felt that if the Indians had a chance to escape, they would. So at this point, Custer informs his company commanders to get all their men prepared for the battle. And he creates a sort of race for his company commanders. Now this is something that Custer had done all through the Civil War as a commander and he was doing it during the Indian Wars too and basically the race was he wanted all the company commanders to see that their men had the amount of ammunition and the right supplies they needed for the battle now as the company commanders uh, decided or confirmed that their men their companies had the right amount of supplies and ammo they were to report directly to Custer now the winner of the race the first company commander to report would uh, have the honor of leading the regiment into the battle so they would be first in line. Well after a couple minutes Captain Frederick Bantine, who is Custer's constant nemesis, uh, stepped forward and stated that he's, he and his men had been strictly adhering to Custer's instructions and they were ready to go as is. So at that Captain Benteen won the race. Uh, Custer turned to the captain and said, well, Captain Benteen, you have the advance. Now, the other company commanders did their jobs, looked, made sure that everybody had the right amount of supplies, and they reported into Custer 
one by one. And that's how they would line up in the, in the order. Now for the loser of the race, the last company commander to report uh, came an unenviable task. Uh, the last company that reported would have the privilege of having to watch over the slow moving pack train, the mules. And this would pretty much guarantee that they wouldn't be in the battle, they would be on the back trail all day and they would have to deal with these mules, it would be slow, it would be a lot of hard work. Well, Company B, Thomas Moore McDougall, he reported in last and unfortunately he got that job. Custer at this point also detached several personnel uh, before they left the Halt Number 2 camp. Now the obvious detachments already made before this day uh, were the Indian Scout Detachment. There were 35 Re, Arikara, Dakota Sioux Scouts. Uh, commanding those that group of Indians, uh, the scout detachment, were two officers that had already been detached from their companies. Uh, the first one was obviously Charles Albert Varnum. He's a second lieutenant. He's detached from Company A. He is commanding the Indian scouts. Uh, another officer is uh, second lieutenant Luther Rector Hare. He's detached from Company K to also help Varnum in commanding the Indian scouts. Uh, both Hare and Varnum have detached orderlies as well, you know, couriers, and um, those two individuals are Eliza T. Strode, a private from Company A. He is with Varnum, and Private Elihu F. Clear of Company K. He is with Hare, so he's Hare's orderly. So those four are already detached with the Indian Scout Detachment. Uh, Custer also detaches uh, Edward Gustave Mathie, he is a first lieutenant of Company M. He is detached to command the pack train personnel, the, the civilian packers, people that are all the civilians. So he has the command of, of the civilians, and along with uh, Captain McDougall's Company B, he will be riding with the packs, obviously. Uh, Custer also detaches from Company B, the executive officer, uh, Second Lieutenant Benjamin Hubert Hodgson. Hodgson is basically given to Reno to be the adjutant in the coming fight for Reno. Now, Custer hasn't divided up the regiment yet, but this move here just proves that at some point the regiment will be divided up, and Reno being the second in command, second highest ranking officer of the regiment, he's going to be leading a battalion. He will be a battalion commander, so he will need an adjutant in the coming fight, so that is why Hodgson has been detached with Reno. Now the final detachment was in regards to the pack train. Uh, Custer asked the other 11 companies, or orders the 11, other 11 companies, to detach one non-commissioned officer, a sergeant or a corporal, and five or six men from their company to go back and to reinforce the pack train and company B. So basically seven men from each company are detached and go back with company B and company B all of a sudden balloons to something like 120 men and that's a pretty good amount to cover the pack train and to uh, deal with the mules because each company had their own mules so the seven men were sent back to look after their own company mules. At this point it's about 11.30, they're at the Halt Number 2 camp, and all the companies are in line. Company H is in the lead with next to headquarters, and all the other companies are in line behind as they reported. Company B is in the back, getting the pack mules ready to move out. So at this point, we will move on down to the next position, and we will deal with the divide.